Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of my goals here this basketball season has been to talk about my betting approach to basketball and to put it on film so people can, years from now, come back and just review the videos and see one way in real time, as it happens, to bet on sports. Now, let me just point out, um, if you track the videos here, you'll see that relatively early in the season, I was talking about futures action on OKC and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Right now, those aren't the only bets that we placed. Right at this point, I have futures action on Denver, OKC, Minnesota, Dallas, and the Clippers. In other words, all of the teams remaining in the Western Conference. The only way I was able to do that is by getting some good speculative plays in there. OKC at huge odds, better than 40 to 1 to win it all. Uh, better than 20 to 1 to win the Western Conference, right? And Minnesota, not as generous, but Minnesota was going off at something like 18 to 1 to win the Western Conference when I placed action on them, right? It's because you're getting these long shot bets and you're hoping one of these long shots makes it to the conference semifinals so you can start hedging, right? That you're able to then bet on some of the other teams. Understand, as I make this video, the Clippers to win the Western Conference are going off at just a smidge less than 14 to 1. Right? They're going off at a plus 1,393. Right? So there's ample leverage built into the system. By the way, the Clippers have home court advantage right now after four games right dallas by contrast is a plus 646 as i explained in my prior video i didn't have futures action on the dallas mavericks until recently i did grab dallas after they won their second win of that clipper series right because i can't wait I need to grab leverage when it's offered, right? The Clippers, of course, look like they were in jeopardy. They won game four on the road in Dallas behind 33 points from both Paul George and James Harden, right? But just understand, you have to protect your speculative action. I couldn't be naked in the semifinals for the conference, on teams that I'm hoping will deliver 18-1 to and higher, right? I want it to be on both sides of the play. I want it to be guaranteed an entrant in the conference finals. So here now we have the setup. Denver is going off at a minus 117 to win the Western Conference. That means you're getting less than even money on Denver, right? OKC. Currently is going off at a plus 323. We don't care. We got them at better than 20 to 1. Earlier in the season, right? Timing is an element to all of these bets. Minnesota is going off at a plus 422. Right here again, we got them at substantially better odds. And we're going to try to cash in this round. Dallas, plus 646. And of course, the Clippers, who I mentioned earlier, a plus 1393. Right, these are the bets listed on cloudbet.com, a Canadian sports book. Right, please be careful, figure out the rules of your jurisdiction to make sure that betting on Cloudbet is legal for you. Right, the risk is yours. I'm not encouraging illegal betting here, I'm just using Cloudbet as a reference for, source for the odds this morning. Uh, April 30th, 2024. Now understand, OKC 
swept their series. They're playing their best basketball of the year. They won in four games. Minnesota. Minnesota, an underdog, in their series, are playing their best basketball. They got here in four games. These are the speculative plays that we have leverage on. But understand here... We're going to give back some money to the casino. I know it's painful. I know it doesn't make sense. I understand OKC actually has, as the one seed, home court against either the Mavs or the Clippers who are still playing. In other words, OKC is going to be rested with home court and they're an athletic, fast team. And they're excellent defensively. They have all the intangibles you would want, right? It's possible that the Mavericks versus the Clippers go seven games. That the winner is going to be exhausted, then is going to have to travel to OKC. Understand, too, OKC has fan backing, right? The fans are hungry. They sense what they have. SGA, Shade Gilius Alexander, Averaged around 30 points a game this year. Were it not for Wemby, it's clear that Chet Holgren would be the rookie of the year. Right? OKC has young talent. The cast around them, they're defensively blessed. They hit a lot of threes. There's a chance that the market has been completely wrong on OKC for quite some time. All of that said, understand, because I'm a system better at the end of the day, the bets I'm placing now are going to be on whoever faces OKC. Because I already have OKC at better than 20 to 1 odds. I want to cash in here. I'm not going to give away all the odds I got on OKC, but what I'm going to do is bet against them. Understand, I have action already on the Mavericks and the Clippers, right? I've encouraged people to grab the Mavs here at a plus 600 and more if you don't have a position on them already. In other words, I want both sides of the play. Both sides of the play. In the OKC series, I'm not going to wait until OKC, a young team, loses a home game, loses home field. Maybe OKC continues their run. It's been spectacular. Maybe OKC wins the next series, gets to the conference finals. But I want multiple cracks at cashing in on the leverage I got on OKC and the problem here and it's a unique problem is the fact that Dallas has two elite players Kyrie and Luka who can both take over games the Clippers have three guys right only two are healthy Kawhi who of course has been an MVP of the finals Kawhi is out so you have James Harden, who I keep saying is a nuclear weapon. He's one of the best players in the game today. He's a guy who can explode and who can by himself win you a game deep in the playoffs. Folks, he's different than Paul George. Understand, the offense runs through James Harden. Harden can actually be the assist man. Understand, Harden has actually led the league in assists in the past, right? So with vets like that, right, Harden, of course, has played in an NBA Finals. Understand, Kyrie has won an NBA Finals. With vets like that who have more experience than SGA and rookie Chet Hulgren, Right? I'm worried about the experience gap between OKC 
and the winner of the Maverick Clipper series. Let's talk about Denver for a moment here. Now, I have money on Denver. Wasn't a hard bet to make, right? Understand, I feel Joker is going to win the MVP this year. I believe Joker should be on his fourth MVP. He should have won it last year. He's a much better player. Let me repeat that. He's a much better player than Joel Embiid. All you have to do is look at the assists. Right, Go to Joel Embiid's MVP year of last year and just ask yourself how guys with comparable numbers, apart from assists, could actually have the guy with four less assists a game win the MVP. Right, Understand Joker would go on to win finals MVP. Joker is about to win his third MVP in four years, right? The problem, too, is Denver knows how it's done. Minnesota just won their first playoff series in decades, right? I believe you have to go back to something like 2004 for the last time that the T-Wolves won a playoff series, Understand, with Denver, they're coming off a championship. Jamal Murray closed out two games with the final shot against the Lakers. He has a ring. Aaron Gordon has a ring. Michael Porter has a ring. Right? The Nuggets not only have a bunch of rings, right, between the team, right? They have one ring, one NBA championship in franchise history. Well, that was last year. KCP has a ring. Understand, they will know how to handle the stress against Minnesota. They also have home field advantage. Right? So, as great as Minnesota has looked playing ball, right? And they've looked tremendous. Anthony Edwards is one of those rare guys who, at times, looks like Michael Jordan. Let's not kid ourselves. He's not Michael. Michael, at Edwards' age, was doing more than Edwards. Right? Michael, at Edwards' age, had already won a Defensive Player of the Year, I believe. Right? But just understand, Edwards can take over games. You have to think about variance. Just like I said, James Harden can carry your team when Anthony Edwards is on a roll. Folks, you don't need anybody else scoring. He is unguardable. You add in the fact that Minnesota has a guy who's going to get in the Hall of Fame just off his defense. Understand, if Detroit's Ben Wallace is in the Hall of Fame, you might as well book the ticket right now for Rudy Gobert. Right then, of course, you have Cat. The thing with Carl Anthony Towns is the three point field goal percentage. Right, folks, he's close to 40% from three. Minnesota's loaded, but there's an experience gap. Minnesota doesn't have home court advantage. Most importantly, if Minnesota pulls the upset, you're already getting something like 18 to 1 odds. Your money at this stage needs to be placed on Denver. Now, I agree. You're paying too high a price. Right? That's why, rather than take Denver in the Minnesota series, my money's on Denver to win the conference. It just makes the hedge less expensive. Right, so, as much as I love OKC, as much as I love Minnesota, as good as they have been to me this year, right, they're the dream you want. You got them at spectacular odds, and the teams not only delivered. Not only did OKC get the one seed, but understand, these teams just blew through the first round. As impressive as they look, 
I'm not taking any chances. I'm betting against them. In this round of the playoffs, I'll be betting against whoever survives between the two in the next round of the playoffs. Right? Age matters as good as OKC is. They're too young. Right? Experience, playoff experience matters as good as the T-Wolves are. And folks, talk about a big three. Don't tell me about Durant, Booker, uh, Bradley Beal. Don't tell me about those dudes. Tell me about Edwards, Gobert, and Cat. That's your big three in the Western Conference. Right? Talent-wise, I can't say Denver has more talent. But Denver's like the Kansas City Chiefs, folks. They have the rings. Right? As the Lakers know, understand. Lakers were leading, you know, at the end of the first half in every of those every one of those playoff games. You got to the second half. And Denver knew when to turn it on. Right? Just consider this round of the playoffs to be higher altitude. The deeper you get in the playoffs, the harder it gets, right? The less oxygen is in the room. Some teams with a lot of talent, I believe Minnesota has a lot of talent, so much talent that the owner is trying to get out of the deal to sell to the A-Rod group, right? They have a lot of talent. The problem is the team they're playing knows the altitude already. Let's take this one step further. Again, I'm a Knicks fan. Right? Knicks fans are so hungry that every time I see Stephen A. Smith on television, he's saying, Nick fans, stand up. Right? I need for folks to understand the Eastern Conference is uncompetitive. I don't see anybody beating the Boston Celtics. Understand, the Celtics were recently in the NBA Finals. They had the lead on the Golden State Warriors. They had taken home court. They were up two games to one. And then, of course, one of the best players I've ever seen in my life, he just won the Mr. Clutch Award, by the way, for this last season. Right? Uh, he's the only guy, other than James Harden, to hit 353s in a season. Steph Curry took over. Of course, in that series, the Celtics were the team with a lot of talent, but not a lot of NBA Finals experience. It was Golden State that had been living in the Finals, and Golden State closed them out. Well, understand, now Brown, Tatum, and them, uh, you know, they now have Porzingis. They're the team with the NBA Finals experience. Right? The Knicks don't have John Randall. The Knicks are a bit of an illusion. Understand the Pacers have no defense whatsoever. Right? So don't fall in love with highlights. I understand these teams are looking good. Right? I, I understand you turn on Sports Center and you see the Pacers and you're saying, my goodness, they have a lot of guys who can score, don't they? Right? You know what they say. There's a group out there that say defense wins championships. The Celtics can snuff you out defensively. And, of course, the Celtics can also outscore you. I'm expecting Boston to come out of the East. Right? Just understand. If OKC or Minnesota pulls the upset and comes out of the West, life for them is still going to be difficult. Don't get me wrong. I have futures on them to win it all because you get more leverage, right? Um, you know, OKC, I believe I have more than 40 to 1 and stuff like that. Understand, if OKC is lucky enough to make the NBA Finals, I'll be betting against them. In other words, some futures plays you make are really designed with the hope that the team makes the playoffs so you can bet against them. I'll be doing that here 
with OKC. Hasn't lost a game in the playoffs. <laughs> They're that dominant. Played great basketball. With OKC and Minnesota, ditto. Right? The teams have delivered. Now it's time for me to hedge against them to take my profits. That's how I'm playing it. Understand it's rarely different this time. I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not going to fall in love with the fact that OKC is a one seed and that OKC is playing great basketball and that their opponent hasn't yet been decided. And in fact, whoever wins game five of that Maverick Clipper series uh, still will have more games to play just to win that series. Right? I'm not going to think it. All I have to do is look around and see Kawhi, former NBA champion, former finals MVP, James Harden, who I consider to be arguably the best player in the game. Okay, I know that's a loaded statement. Hey, it is what it is, right? Uh, Paul George, all I have to do is look around, right? That game seven years ago, Cleveland at Golden State, one of the biggest games of our time, right? Had Golden State won that game, we would be talking about that Golden State team as among the best ever. I need for you to look at the box score of that game. Again, it's Cleveland on the road against Golden State. Look at Kyrie Irving's numbers. If you look at that fourth quarter, you're going to see Kyrie Irving hitting big shots. That's who he is. Right? You see a Kyrie Irving and you see him with MVP candidate Luka. Luka's not going to win it, but MVP candidate Luka. Right? And you realize, wow, you know, these are vets who, if they get hot, can beat anybody. Right? I'm hedging against OKC and Minnesota, two of my favorite plays this year, right here, going forward. Not just this round of the playoffs, but in the conference finals. And if they're fortunate enough to get to the NBA finals, I'll be betting against them in the NBA finals. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.